Hi, every <laughs> Hi everyone. Anthony Fantano here. Thank you for watching. Internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review. Kendrick Lamar, Good Kid, Mad City. This dude is a Compton rapper. This is his sophomore full-length album, the follow-up to last year's Section 80, which is one of my favorite hip-hop albums of 2011. And it's a conscious hip-hop album that does not sacrifice great flows, production, catchy hooks, stellar wordplay, and personality in the process of, of developing a, a very relevant and socially aware message. And it does this through a series of short stories in, in the track's lyrics that kind of come together thematically by the end of the album. Though Kendrick has a lot of great qualities as a rapper, what I thought was so awesome about Section 80 is how conceptual the album was. And that was a characteristic about him and his music that I just was hoping he would not let go of as he kind of went into later albums. And I'm actually really happy to say that being conceptual is one of the artistic personality traits of, of Kendrick that has gotten stronger. There are a good handful of tracks from this album that had been released before the release of this LP, including Swimming Pools, Backseat Freestyle, Compton, The Art of Peer Pressure as well, but none of it really makes total sense until the entire album is being listened to from beginning to end, just kind of standing back, getting a glimpse at the bigger picture of things. As far as lyrics on this LP go, they're just on point, track after track after track. None of the flows really feel elementary or anything like that. And though some songs may feel a little more shallow on the surface than others, it may depend on the kind of character that, that Kendrick is playing on the song. For example, the track Backseat Freestyle, you've got Kendrick kind of rapping very braggadociously over, over this banger beat about his growing as big as the Eiffel Tower. It is just completely over the top, ridiculous. If you're familiar with this kid's music, it's just really out of character for him. But if you look into the voicemail messages occurring after and before the track and the music that comes before and after the track, it becomes apparent that Kendrick right now is in the backseat of a car, chilling with his friends, just kind of being as loud and obnoxious as, as they are, as they're all hanging out together. Right after Backseat Freestyle, you get the track The Art of Peer Pressure, which is kind of like an internal monologue with Kendrick where, yeah, he's hanging out with his friends and he's having, you know, this good time on the outside. But in fact, he's kind of doing all this stuff that is out of character for him, whether it be doing drugs, running up on people, robbing houses, things he wouldn't normally find himself doing if he wasn't hanging out with people who see themselves successfully living this gangster lifestyle. And with this track, it becomes even more interesting and ironic that on Backseat Freestyle, how he's rapping about how he would love all this money and power living this lifestyle, he's as far away from that as one could possibly imagine. Good Kid Mad City is pretty much a story of love, lust, violence, the violence that you're surrounded with kind of sucking you in, the violence you're surrounded with tearing your family apart, and finally the realization of where a violent path can kind of bring you in life, which is where a song like Real comes in toward the end of this LP. And pretty much every track on this album adds to that narrative. Like the track Poetic Justice, which is kind of like a love song. Kendrick sees himself in like this love fantasy with this girl that's mentioned toward the beginning of the album, Shireen. But at the end of the track, Kendrick ends up getting jumped by two cousins of hers. At that moment, Kendrick kind of sees himself violently snap back into a harsh reality after seeing, hey, you know, like living this life isn't really so bad. Things are going pretty well. I'm in love. I see money coming my way, which is kind of another fantasy Kendrick sees himself in the midst of on the track Money Trees right before Poetic Justice. After these two songs, it's two of the grittiest tracks on this entire LP, Good Kid and Mad City, that become really sobering. The first of which Kendrick is talking about the death of his uncle, he's talking about racial profiling from police officers, and the track Mad City takes a look at that same violence but from more of a retrospective angle with Kendrick kind of rapping about a younger version of himself. And on that track, he actually takes a completely different inflection with his voice, rapping where his voice is cracking like this, whether it's from emotion or maybe even puberty if he's trying to be a younger version of himself. Either way, it's just really chilling. And the old school sound of that retrospective angle is 
embraced even more as there is a beat change toward the middle of the track. You do get some self-aware spots on this album where you have Kendrick kind of rapping about his current self outside of this storyline, like Bitch Don't Kill My Vibe, where he's kind of rapping about his fame and sort of where he sees his artistic vision going as he gets more attention on his music, and sort of how his message is ultimately what's going to be most important to him. And the song Sing About Me is really one of the most interesting songs I've ever heard, where a rapper is, is literally writing about his art and his career in such a way where it's impacting the people who listen to it, or the people he raps about. I mean, he literally does verses on this song referencing people who kind of were inspirations for music on this album and his previous LP too. In a way, the song is kind of like another layer of narrative to this album itself. It's kind of like an epilogue in a way. And the song Compton, the, the closing track to this LP, it's kind of like a, a celebratory song just talking about the area where this story takes place. It's kind of like the song that if you really do take this album as being a story, it's, it's the track that really kind of plays as the credits are rolling. Now, as far as the production goes on this LP, it is sonically inconsistent, but I do think overall it's great. But the reason I say sonically inconsistent is that, you know, the sounds on this LP change up as much as the scenes and just sort of the moods of these tracks do. You know, the, the sounds most definitely fit the story Kendrick is trying to tell or where he is in the progression of this tale. The opening track, Shireen, is just really nocturnal, it's really dark, and it's completely fitting for what kind of seems to be a night drive to his girlfriend's house, you know, going to meet her, talking about being with her, what brought him up until this point, and basically the point at which he is about to get jumped, and then it just kind of cuts. The song Backseat Freestyle is perfect for the braggadocious rhymes that Kendrick spits over that song, and is fitting for the outward personality that he has as he's doing these things he finds to be very outside of his character. The song is basically a portrait of that face that people put on when they want to be hard, they want to fit in, they want to be perceived to be tough, the best, the greatest. But the other side of that song is the art of peer pressure, and the beat on there is really spacious, very quiet, it's meant to sound as internal as the thoughts that Kendrick is spitting all over that track, the thoughts that he doesn't really want to express because of the people that are surrounding him. Money Trees, Poetic Justice sound really dreamy, really fantasy, sonically there's like this Oasis, they're this place you want to be, but Good Kid Mad City just kind of, like I said earlier, snapped things back into reality. They're much darker, grittier, hard-hitting. I believe the track Swimming Pools was the first to drop from this LP. It's a song I wasn't totally hot on at first, but it has totally grown on me. It's got kind of a synthetic vibe to it. Synthetic drums, synthetic keyboards, and there are a lot of trap-style hi-hats going out throughout the track. It feels really smooth, kind of watery, like you can dive into it, just like the metaphorical swimming pool full of alcohol that Kendrick is rapping about that, you know, people figuratively use to kind of douse their pain, douse their sorrows, basically deal with this terrible situation surrounding them in, in a really unhealthy way. And I love the sound of the Just Blaze beat on that closing track, Compton. I mean, the horns on that track sound fantastic. The talk box vocals at the very end are nice too. Again, the sound of the instrumental is just always really logical in terms of what is being said in the lyrics, and I love that. You know, and just the sound quality, the musicality of, of these instrumentals are great too. Some feature some pretty nice piano pieces, some string pieces as well, nice background vocalists. And the features on here are pretty great too. Not that they're spitting the best verses of all time, but what I love about this LP is, like the beats, Kendrick is very careful about placing certain people in certain places so that it works. J-Rock is in a perfect spot on this album. Dre is placed perfectly on this LP too, with the track Compton, of course. And even Drake finds himself fitting nicely into this album. I mean, stylistically, Drake and Kendrick are two very different artists, and yet Drake fits like a glove into the love song on this album. Every MC helps Kendrick not really tell this story directly, but they further the feeling of the song with whatever they're saying. As far as hip-hop albums go, and just 
albums in general. This this thing has almost everything I look for. You know, it has a great concept, great lyrics, great instrumentals, sound. I think the only weak spot that Kendrick has on this LP, something that continues to kind of be a weak spot for him, are just the hooks. But I have to admit that this LP is a nice improvement hook-wise over what I heard on Section 80. Poetic Justice has kind of a corny vocal on the hook. The song Real, where you know, kind of, I'm really, really real. The hook is just really, really just vapid. While I do like the sentiment of the song, I really kind of feel like no forethought went into that chorus. And there are moments where Kendrick is singing on here in this really weird inflection. It's kind of robotic. And while it did hit me as being pretty strange at first, it really grew on me pretty heavy by my third or fourth listen to this LP. I'm really impressed with this LP. I mean, I love it. I think it's fantastic. I think Kendrick has made his profound quality, you know, the, the, that quality that he has to bring a strong message to his music uh, even better. You know, he's, he's evolved that. He's brought it to the next level. And yet he's done it by not being preachy, not beating listeners over the head with some kind of, you know, cause or very direct message. He's done it through allegory, anecdotes, a combination of fiction and nonfiction that if you listen to it hard enough to get the bigger picture, get the narrative, and just hear the story, it's most likely going to have a bigger impact on you. I'm pretty much feeling a light to decent nine on this album. What did you think of it? If you've listened to it, did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? And what should I review next? Anthony Fantano, Kendrick Lamar, Good 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 Kid, Mad City, Forever. Mm -hmm.